It's great to be with you on this Facebook Live event. My name is Pastor Jim Bradford, and uh, almost everything we do uh, here in terms of our video content is pre-recorded, but this is our one live event every week. I, I really enjoy coming and spending time with you and another one of our pastoral team and just uh, giving you some updates. We'll do some Q&A, and then we'll have a prayer time at the end. So thank you for joining in to, for this half hour or so of time. I'm really grateful to have Pastor Steve Pulis with us. Uh, pastor Steve has been our youth pastor for the last year and a half, and then a few months before that, you were our interim youth pastor. And uh, what an amazing job you're doing, Steve. Steve also works with Convoy of Hope. He's the senior director for community events, which often takes him all over the world. So tell me just a little about your family, Steve. Oh, yeah. Well, first, we're thrilled to be a part of the church team here, to get to work with you and so many other tremendous friends and just be a part of this family. But my wife, Melissa, is at home watching right now, uh -huh. and uh, my son, Colin, and then my older son, Nathan. And so we have four different areas of the house. One's <laughs> just finishing up college work. I think Nathan's about done with evangel semester. Wow. Nathan's got his area. He's on uh -huh. his computer. He's taking care of high school work, getting this semester knocked out. Melissa and I kind of share the, the family room, which is fun. We sit across from each other, uh -huh. able to see each other each day. But she works at Evangel, is yeah. keeping very busy there. And then uh, between here at the church and with Convoy, I'm across the room. And so it's been a lot of fun to get to work with her, even though we don't work with her. Yeah, well, you sounds like you're making the most of it. And you do have a fantastic family. I know your wife was on our church board, actually, mm -hmm. Melissa, um, right up to about... I think she had to step off two months before the end of her term because we hired you. Yes. So uh, we, we just so appreciate Melissa as well. It was a treat to have you here, uh, Steve. Well, in some of the questions, we're going to be actually, some of the questions set us up to talk about some of the things coming up, and especially the last question we're very excited about, something Steve's very involved in that we're going to be doing as a church family here in the next couple of weeks in our community. But I just want to thank all of you for your faithfulness, um, I'm always finding myself being grateful to you for the way you're connecting with each other. Uh, many of our Sunday morning groups are meeting online. Uh, we have just finished, in fact, yesterday, Steve, we just finished calling everybody in the church. Fantastic. I mean, this is hundreds Incredible. and hundreds and hundreds of phone calls. If you didn't receive a call, we apologize. It could be we have your name but didn't have a phone number for you on our records. Or I know a couple of calls I made, the phone number didn't work anymore, probably landlines that have been stopped, and we may not have your cell phone number yet. But uh, if, you didn't, if you didn't receive a call, uh, forgive us for that. We tried. But uh, if you do have any kind of specific need, please let us know. Uh, we we uh, want to be there. If there's any way we could serve you as a church family, if you have needs, we could we could marshal resources to help you with. We'd, we'd love to do that. But it was a tremendous experience talking to so many people in the life of the church. And we have, some, uh, we have Mother's Day coming up in a week and a half. And you're going to hear some of the details uh, coming up in the next few days and definitely uh, this Sunday. But uh, Mother's Day afternoon, just kind of block that out. We're going to do something special for all the moms and ladies in the church if you want to be a part of that. We, we can't get together and stand near each other, but we can drive cars and do things. So you just be keeping your ear open for something really special on Mother's Day afternoon. And Pastor Crystal, who is uh, also on our pastoral team, she will be speaking. Uh, she's going to be recording her message is coming Tuesday afternoon. And then that following Sunday, Mother's Day, you'll be able to hear a wonderful message from Pastor Crystal. I think, uh, Steve, we'll get to questions right away and uh, see where we go from there. And then I'm looking forward to the prayer time you're going to lead at the end. Sounds good. Let's go to our first question. Well, hi, guys. I'll be feeding you the questions tonight. Our first one's for Pastor Jim. It's a question we've gotten from several people. Uh, but with the governor's announcement last week about reopening the state, a lot of people want to know, are we going to open church back up next week? What can you tell us? Uh, we are not opening church up next week. I'm so sorry. I so wish we could. Tomorrow morning, this is Wednesday night, tomorrow morning, uh, the, the uh, Springfield and Greene County uh, um, leadership are going to have a special press conference in which they're going to be unfolding ongoing guidelines for reopening our community after the shelter-in-place 
order is completed this coming Sunday. And so there's not a lot we can say until then, except we do know it's going to be some time before large groups are able to meet together. And that, that means for us as a church in the way we've always known and loved, that's not going to be possible for some time yet. We don't know, Steve, how long this is going to be. We, we have, a, um, we have a, a task force we put together on our, on, from our leadership team that's going to be looking at all the ins and outs. I know a lot of places in the country are recommending still social distancing, six feet between people. So in a church, a three feet foot radius all around you is about 28 square feet. And if you turn that into a square, three feet on each side, front, front and back and side, that's 36 square feet of space every one person takes. Um, logistically, how you do church services that way, uh, some, some municipalities are requiring only 25% of, of any given room be filled. So uh, we are waiting for the details tomorrow, but we're not hopeful that groups can be made. Plus, we're still concerned about safety in our community. Mm -hmm. We do not want anybody getting infected here. We don't want to take that risk. We don't want to be encouraging people who are high risk coming back to church prematurely. So we will be keeping you posted on what we are thinking and planning, but it's definitely not going to be within the next few weeks. Uh, meanwhile, we're going to keep turning out all the video content we can and keep Growing that, I know in another part of our building, even right now, uh, there's new worship music being recorded for Sunday mornings, and uh, there's going to be a lot of special interest features in our Sunday morning services coming up. So we, we hope that you just continue to uh, tune in. I'm sorry we can't be meeting yet, but uh, we are going to go through a very thoughtful process about reopening with our staff leadership team and our board. All right, uh, we'll go to another question. This next one's for Pastor Steve. Uh, Steve, similar to Pastor Justin last week, this is not the first time uh, that you've worked at Central Assembly. Can you tell us a little bit about your history and background with Central? Sure. You know, as I mentioned, I just love being a part. Central has always been my church family. When I was seven years old, my dad was on staff here as a Christian education pastor. So I grew up here through my childhood and then actually became part of the youth ministry as a youth. Um, that was 1980, and most of the years since then, I've either been a youth or been part of the youth leadership here. So by the late 80s, when I was in college, was a youth leader here and enjoyed really being shaped for ministry here. This is what taught me what ministry was all about, and as leaders gathered around me and formed me, then I was able to be the youth pastor in the early 90s. And as we came back to Springfield to be Youth Alive missionaries, I was a youth leader here, starting with Craig Cunningham for the 20 years until we actually became the youth pastors again. So I was the youngest youth pastor the first time I was here, and now I'm the oldest youth oldest pastor youth we've pastor. had here at the church. <laughs> I'd, I'd say for me, um, looking around and seeing, for instance, John Mampa, who was one of my mm. Sunday school teachers, and wow. looking at the impact that he and, and dozens and dozens and dozens of people had to shape me, uh, to now be able to pay that forward, so to speak, to have that same type of opportunity. I'm still being discipled here, and now I'm able to help disciple others as well. So it's just a joy, a thrill, and a privilege. Uh, I get to youth pastor the children of some of the people whose parents I youth pastored. Wow. So uh, just, just amazing. This is, this is home for our entire yeah. family. Our kids have never known any other church and love being here. Yeah. You know, we are a very multi-generational place, and that's one of the benefits, it is generational, like, mm -hmm. like the kids of who used to be the kids are still here, and it's an amazing thing. And yes. we, we love what you're doing. I tell you, you built such a strong youth leadership team, mm -hmm. and, uh, and kids love you, and you're a great communicator, too. I know I'm using you also as an associate pastor in the church, and you're doing some of the Sunday morning preaching when I'm gone, and uh, what a gift to have you. And to think that our youth pastor has spent years and years training other youth pastors. And uh, what, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing. We're so grateful you said yes to coming on our team. I just wanted to throw that into your answer there. <laughs> Thanks. Again, uh, just a joy. You talked about teams, of course, uh, Josh Seaman yeah, and Josh. Kim Catron. Yeah. And then, as you mentioned, I mean, they're the three of us. Uh, without them, uh, phenomenal, amazing leaders. But then the leaders, as you mentioned, that uh, tonight we'll actually get to see on our Zoom Tribes debrief afterwards when we all join together, yeah. one of the highlights of the week, but tremendous yeah. 
leadership uh, here at Central. Yeah, well, Pastor Josh, he works at the middle school right next door and, mm -hmm. and uh, credential minister, Kim's a credential, someone's got minister too, yes. working just coordinating all of our complicated lives and yes. keeping things running. So well, we're so gifted right now with wonderful leaders and amazing young people. Yes, That's really best. what it's all about, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. Yes. I just gotta give a shout out to our amazing teenagers. Absolutely, sir. you know, I, I say this at the risk of you know excluding others, but um, we have a couple of valedictorians that are gonna be able to graduate. Well, now the graduation ceremony is not till August, right. but just to show the level that come through Central Assembly, the diversity of students that are here, but some of the sharpest in the city are here as yeah. well. Yeah, that's an amazing accomplishment, that valedictorian honor. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Great. Hey, let's go to another question. Well, this next question came in for Pastor Jim, but Steve, we'd love to hear your answer as well. Uh, this is from Jane Thomas in our congregation. She says, I have many translations of the Bible at home. I was wondering what translations you use to study, and which translations do you think are most accurate to the original Hebrew and Greek languages? Thank you, Jane, for that great question, and thank you for being a student of the Word. Um, I, I personally use the New International Version of the Bible uh, be, uh, for public preaching, and so I, I do study it a lot in terms of my preparation for preaching. I like its le readability as well as its accuracy. However, probably the most word-for-word, -word, um, literally accurate version would be the New American Standard Bible. Uh, the King James Bible was translated off of texts that aren't really our best, oldest, most accurate text, uh, but the New American Standard Version was. And the ESV is close to it as well, close to a very accurate word, word for word translation. The NIV that I use would be more readable. It's called a dynamic equivalent. If New, New American Standard is a word for word translation, New International Version would be sort of a thought-by-thought thought translation. It's quite accurate. Some of the wording's identical to New American Standard, but it, uh, it, it is in language, a, a version of English that we're very familiar with in the 21st century. And so I, I enjoy the NIV. That's my favorite go-to for uh, sermon, uh, for messages. And so I do a lot there. But if I want a real literal translation, I often look up the uh, New American Standard Version as well. Is that what you use? Absolutely, Ex exactly the same answer. Yeah. Is uh, that right? Yeah. 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 It's great to be a student of the Word. I tell you, I've studied the Word for years and years, and there's still no exhausting of its beauty and its depth. And and uh, thank God for the great translations we have. Absolutely. You, you know, every every translation has its good days and its bad days, but never around the major issues. And I think the key probably around the different versions that you've listed is what is the most readable and understandable for you? You know, right. what do you connect with the best that helps you really understand and know who Jesus is and become yeah. more like him? All the ones that you mentioned can help you do that. Exactly. Okay, we'll go to uh, the next question. Well, this next question is for Pastor Steve. Uh, Pastor Steve, people want to know how has youth ministry changed in the years that you've been involved with it? And how is it different in this specific moment right now? Yeah, great question. You know, I, I think of communication as to how things have changed. We've gone from when I was first here as youth pastor, the days of clip art books. Remember those, oh, Pastor yeah. Jim? Oh, yeah, you're kidding. I, I was always right. proud of myself where we'd take cardstock, we'd cut out or photocopy the piece of clip art, we'd tape it on there. You had to get the tape exactly yeah. perfect so it didn't show lines, and we could make our own postcards. <laughs> now we don't even have or use postcards, you know. Yeah. Yeah, the, we've gone from clip art to TikTok as yeah. far as Instagram and the way that we communicate back and forth. And even today, communication being the issue that's changed so much, uh, a great example of that's youth camp. We found out today, we received an email that our youth camps yeah. and our kids camps uh, had been canceled and we knew they were talking about that and deciding what to do about that. And very difficult decision. Yeah. Um, I was looking forward to camp. So many of us were looking forward to going and being there, support and understand why they made that decision difficult. But before we could even get together and talk and put together and release that information, I already had students asking, hey, I've yeah. seen on Facebook, I've right. seen on social media, camps are canceled, what's going on with camps? And uh, just that communication yeah. is so quick. Uh, so definitely different in some senses, definitely better and easier. 
Um, yes, that, that's the upside of it, isn't it? it? It's, and we, we're familiar with the downside, but imagine if we'd had, instead of COVID-19, COVID-89, as one of my oh, friends yeah. posted on Facebook the other day. What, yeah. what would we do if it was that year, 30 yeah. years ago? Uh, he suggested maybe we'd have a lot more church newsletters that were going on, you know? <laughs> yeah. He even pointed out you couldn't even get on the phone like we did because long distance was so expensive. Calling to Ozark, Missouri used to be a long distance phone call from wow. here in Springfield. So the ease of communication has really made a significant difference for today. And I'd yeah. say in this environment, it's always been about relationships. Relationships with Jesus, number one, who we are with Him, right. becoming more like Him. Yeah. letting his spirit shape us mm -hmm. and that often happens through each other so because we're at home i think parents have always wanted to and always tried to but have needed to and have owned that discipleship process even more because we're at home now so that ability to tie into the daily devotionals that you do in the morning i know we watch them as a family at dinner so oh, do you? That's yeah. supper time. We eat, mm -hmm. we watch the devotional, we pray together, and then we play a family game most evenings. That's kind That's of the flow awesome. we've developed, and it's been a blast. But being able to tie into that, of course, the Sunday morning message, the yeah. hub that we mm -hmm. have there, uh, has enabled us to be able to communicate that yeah. way. For youth specifically then, like on Wednesday nights, we would have never been able to transition to what we have now. We felt like initially that interaction was going to be a key. Yeah. We wanted students to engage in scripture, but we wanted them to be able to interact with each other. So we take the Sunday morning message and we're now having Zoom tribes where all of our four different tribes meet as soon as this is over at 7.30. Yeah, 7.30 tonight. Yeah, yeah. families mm -hmm. can jump on, students can jump on. If you haven't jumped on one yet, go to thecentralhub.org. We'll have the links there for you. And we have fun at the beginning. I mean, it's still about relationships and fun and being with others. A few weeks ago, my son comes running up from the basement, runs in, grabs a box of cereal, runs downstairs, and he's in a different tribe than I was in. Yeah. Melissa was in another one. Yeah. And in our tribe leaders debrief afterwards, I'm like, what was going on? Yeah. They did a virtual scavenger hunt where they were looking around the house for all the different things. Really? And the first team to get them all back won, and some of our other tribes have done that. Uh, we did a trick shot challenge, which Carter T., who's right now calling the shots behind the camera, submitted a video with a lot of other students of their trick shots. And uh, this week, one of our tribes did, what are you doing to stay active? And a wow. lot of different students put up their workouts. And I'll tell you, Carissa Metzger's workout video made me sore just watching it. I mean, she's mm. quite the swimmer and, and in more shape than I can imagine. But So there's that fun activity and that interaction. But then we focus in on Sunday morning's message. And we'll right. walk through and discuss that as yes. a group. It's and uh, thrilled last week to hear students talk about, as you talked about solitude and time mm -hmm. alone and being still, their time with God. Yeah. And, and really Remarkable. without much prompting, uh, different students in different ways throughout the day yeah. that are engaging in scripture Praise in their God. own life. So the ability today to communicate, the ability to connect people with each other and still connect with Jesus is still what it's all about. So in some ways, things have changed dramatically, uh, but in other ways, the yeah. main things and focusing on God, yeah. we just find better ways to do it today. That's right. Yeah. Well, we think connecting to God, to each other, and to our purpose is timeless. Absolutely. And, uh, but you're translating that in a wonderful way to mm -hmm. the youth culture that, uh, that, that, that marks uh, 2020. It's fantastic. And using all the tools. Mm -hmm. So thank God for that. We're, we're so grateful. Yes. Uh, we intentionally, Steve, left the last question to the last question because it's going to uh, open up something. I'll respond to the first part of it, then I want to kick it to you. And I'm very excited about what we're going to talk about next. Well, this is our last question tonight. It's another one that we've heard from several people. Uh, people have asked us, what is Central doing to engage uh, with our neighborhood and community uh, during this crisis time? I think we have a special announcement about that tonight. So, guys, what can you tell us? Well, we've been doing things uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, we work with, for instance, Weaver School. I know they referred at least three families to us. Uh, that needed groceries, financial resources. We've been taking people to the stores or delivering groceries to them, all within the safety protocols as needs have come up. Uh, we've tried to keep in calling everybody in the congregation, like I mentioned at the beginning of this program, um, trying to keep uh, an ear open to any way we could need, meet needs if there's financial difficulties, trouble getting out to get food, these things. So we've been helping people in those ways. But... We are planning for a week from this Saturday, that'll be May 9th, that'll be the Saturday of Mother's Day weekend, 
uh, we're planning a massive outreach right across Boonville in the Boonville parking lot, right across the street from the church here that we hope will reach 1,250 families in our community in a massive drive-through. We can't have people getting out of cars, but we're going to have a drive-through partnership program with Convoy of Hope. Convoy and Central are going together. Uh, and can you tell, uh, you really have stepped up to some critical leadership of this event. Of course, you work for Convoy as well. So you could kind of give, give some, put some flesh on those bones for us. Yes, we're thrilled both from Central Assembly and Convoy of Hope to partner together to truly love our neighbors. And that's what it's about. Yes. Pastor, you were saying in a staff meeting just a couple weeks ago, what could we do? Could we do something around Mother's Day weekend? Is there an outreach? And so that was easy to be able to step up and say, hey, here's an idea. And Convoy of Hope jumped on board very quickly. And right across from Boonville, our main entrance into the building and the large lot that we have there, as you mentioned, uh, Convoy's in the middle of a 10 million meals effort to provide wow. 10 million meals to people who have really suffered from COVID-19. I say right in the middle of, I actually heard this morning, we've reached that 10 million you goal. Have. Wow. And now we're just going to see what's beyond that. Uh, but we'll have a truckload full of groceries and supplies here on that day. As you mentioned, 1,000 to 1,250 cars that we'll be able to help or families. Uh, Pastor David with his relationships in the community, yes. through the schools, through the neighborhood associations. And this isn't a citywide event. It's really our neighborhood right around us. Yes. Due to COVID-19, we can't do something for everybody. So we uh, pick the right appropriate size in mm -hmm. our neighborhood here. And we feel like every family that will come through will be able to receive four bags of groceries, a pallet of water, a gallon of bleach, and some disinfectant. We've actually got Bombas socks that we'll be giving to every oh, person that comes wild. through. Yeah, really? uh, Gardens in a Bag gardens from in a Baker bag. Creek yeah. Heirloom Seeds. They can plant their own herbs at home. A lot of Fantastic. people talking about that now. Uh, and a number of other supplies that we'll be able to give them. Uh, if they would like the church to follow up and call mm -hmm. and pray with them or connect them to yeah. the church, um, we're going to provide them the opportunity to give us their information so we can do that as well. Mm -hmm. yes. We want to try to meet as many different needs holistically as we can on that day. And Convoy, uh, I mean Freedom City Church, not only Convoy, but Freedom City Church is going to be working with us on this outreach with some volunteers and also helping us with follow-up. And it's going to be an amazing, yes. amazing day. That uh, partnership with Freedom City will indeed, yeah. as our sister church, unite yeah. us together. It so uh, I probably should talk a little bit about volunteers. Yes, please. Yeah. Yes. We've got uh, a great group of leaders here at the church, the team here, the team at Convoy working together. And then we've got some national volunteers for Convoy out of our church that have helped us. Uh, guys like Terry Davis and Joel Sutherland and David Maine and Christian Rodriguez and Pastor Carter as well. Amazing and Dave Mendito is going to jump in. Great. They're going to be our team leaders for the different areas that we have. And we need about 100 volunteers for three different times, just total of 300 volunteers. We're limiting the number one with what we're doing with the drive through pods. So as you mentioned, our mm -hmm. guests won't have to get out of our car. We will have on masks and gloves and do all the yes. safety protocols that we need to and practice social distancing. And the volunteers will stay within their team and not intermingle because, again, the safety of our guests and our volunteers, as always, is our top priority. We'll have three times in which we can have up to 100 come. So if you'd like to sign up Friday, and this will be May 8th uh, on Friday, a week from this Friday, We'll take 100 volunteers at 10 a.m. to help bag groceries. Then at 1 p.m., another 100 volunteers to come help bag groceries. And then Saturday, 10 a.m. till end of the afternoon, probably 4 mm -hmm. o'clock, maybe a little early, but about 4 o'clock, a third set of 100 volunteers to help with the actual outreach. And I'll tell you, this has come together really quick. It's been a week and a couple of days since we've got approval and got the yeah. ball rolling and so much has happened. But we think even by tomorrow, you'll be able to go to thecentralhub.org look for the Convoy of Hope Outreach, click, and you can sign up for one of those spots. Uh, we really feel like those spots are probably going to fill quick, so right. let your friends know, people you want to come volunteer. Uh, if you're under 18, you do need to come with a parent, so anybody under 18, keep that in mind. Bring your mom and dad along with you, parent or guardian, but we'd love to have everybody come, love their neighbors, really be Jesus with skin on, but still keep six feet apart from each other. Fantastic. Can't wait for that day. Me it's either. Be so it, great. It is Just going to love on our community, bless our community. And uh, hey, a lot of us are scratching to get out and do something and do something that makes a difference. So mm -hmm. that's fantastic. Thank you for all your leadership with that, Steve. In fact, I'm going to kick it back to you in the last five or 10 minutes so we have 
uh, if you just lead us in, a, in some prayer. And this would be a great, great event to even pray for mm -hmm. specifically. Yes. And so we, we always try to take the last part of this Facebook Live event. So glad you've joined in with all of us. Thank you. Uh, we're a big family and uh, grateful to be able to just share hearts on these, these nights. And I look forward to our prayer time now. Will you, will you just uh, lead it for us, Steve? Absolutely. Be privileged to. You know, as we pray together, I want to use the simple acronym we use a lot here at Central Assembly, P-R-A-Y. I'm just going to walk us through the four steps of that. As I do, those stand for praise, for repent, for ask, and for yield or yes. I'll just take a brief amount of time with each one. Uh, and as we've learned now after several weeks at home, sometimes it can be difficult to know how to interact with the screen. You know, on Sunday mornings, Melissa and I do our best to sing along out loud. It just really? kind of helps wow. create that worship environment. We don't really stand up like we do a lot of times at church. We stay seated, but, but we do sing out loud. And I found when I pray, if I pray loud enough to hear myself. Yeah. It just helps me focus a little bit more. That's you don't, so true. Yeah, you, you don't have to get all the punctuation right. You know, it doesn't have to be a complete sentence. But rather than kind of uh, just a repetitive, I focus a little bit more. So as I lead us, I'd encourage you to do that. Pray just loud enough to hear yourself. Your neighbor doesn't necessarily have to, or person across the room may not need to be able to hear you. But if you can hear yourself, I think it'll help you. And as we pray, let's do focus on the outreach coming up but on how we can live like Jesus and share Jesus during right. this time, yes. whether that's through email, Facebook, social media, whether it is a conversation across the backyard with a neighbor or someone that you might see while you're socially or physically distancing. Let's pray for the Holy Spirit to give us His ideas. Would you join with me? Let's start by praise, and let's just praise God, thank Him for who He is, His love for us, and our ability to share Him with others. Thank God, I, I do love you tonight you, Lord. more than anything. I acknowledge my need for you, yes. my love for you, how incredibly magnificent, even in a time of being stuck at home, even in a time where we're not sure what the next few weeks look like, we know you know. We I'm thankful, God, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm thankful for the confidence. I praise you that you never change, Lord. Even thank when my you, life's Lord. changed tremendously in a matter of days, you're the same. And yes. I thank you, Lord. We have that confidence in you. Lord, thank you that we can live for you and know that others need you. So, God, we, we praise you that we can share you with others. Amen, uh, we can live yes. differently than perhaps praise those you. around us to where there is a noticeable difference. We can look to praise your spirit you. to open up conversations where God comes up. Use us in that. Do that. We praise you. We thank you that your Holy Amen. Spirit gives us your inspired ideas, even in a time yes. of pandemic being at home. Thank you for that. We praise you. We love you, Lord. So we move from the P or praise to R. That stands for repent. This time often for me is a little shorter, but I, I do want you to pray loud enough to hear yourself and just do a self-inventory. Uh, what in your life do you need to repent for? So as I do that, just join along with your own life. Oh, God. Lord, I do ask for your forgiveness. Uh, yes. I do repent God, in my life, of thinking I could do things on my own, in my own strength, and not relying oh, on your God. Spirit. We know it's not might, not power, but it's by yes. your Spirit. And we believe that now yes. as much as ever, God. And so I repent yes. uh, for using my own thoughts, skills, yes. abilities, whatever talents you may have given me, and not just immediately knowing and acknowledging my dependence upon you. Yes. That that uh, that combining of the Holy Spirit's work and anointing in my life, God. I need you. Lord, we repent for attitudes, for things I think, for things I say, for things yes. I do. God, walk through our lives right now in our homes. And if there's things your Spirit needs to prompt us or nudge us to repent yes. for, cleanse my life, God. Cleanse I us, need Lord. you. I need your forgiveness. I need your continued help. And I acknowledge that, Lord, completely dependent upon you, yet thankful that I'm a new creation in you, and that I'm a child in your kingdom. We thank you for that, Lord. So as we move from that repentance, the P-R-A stands for ask. Mm. And this is that time where oftentimes it's most of what our prayers are, where really it should just be a piece of what yes. God has taught us and how to pray. So there are times to ask, and let's ask for God's help, that we would truly meet the needs of people in our community through this outreach and at the same time that we would be able to share Jesus as we prayed earlier with those immediately around us. So God, we do ask, 
We ask for your protection. We ask yes. for your anointing. We ask for your direction. We ask for your spirit to go ahead of us. Lord, as postcards are mailed to the homes around us, the schools and neighborhood associations, get the word out. We pray your spirit would permeate every piece of promotion. People would sense your spirit and be drawn on May 9th to 1301 Boonville, to that yes. parking lot across the street. And while there, they would sense your presence, God. We ask for you to change lives on that day. We Amen. ask that we're able to meet physical yes. needs, and we want to yes. do that. But God, Jesus is at the center oh, of everything we do. Connecting yes. people with you is the ultimate goal of why we want to share your love in such a physical way. Lord, let us share the spiritual needs and meet people's lives as well. May there be people who on that day acknowledge you, accept you as Savior, and become part of a discipleship community, Lord. May there be those who turn in a response card and say, yeah, please pray for me, please call. Lord, use us, use Freedom City, use the volunteers that'll come. May people see Jesus when they see us. Yes, and Lord, Lord, the last part of ask, Lord, use us individually. Lord, Amen. it is more difficult today. Us, we don't have as much contact as we're used to. But maybe if we turned our social media into opportunities to thank you, to praise you, mm -hmm. to, to talk about you, to tell thank your you, story, Lord. maybe instead of me telling my story so often, God, oh. give us your ideas. Give us your ways. Maybe when we are getting the mail and that neighbor's across the street, we have a brief conversation from a distance, but open up that yes, opportunity. Lord to either talk about you or something we've learned in your word or something we've seen in a video from pastor. Let us continue to share the life-changing love of Jesus to our world. We ask for your help and your anointing. We need you. We acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. Jesus' yes, name. Yes, we ask, Lord. And finally, the why is yield or yes. And often when we've asked for things, particularly in a time of pandemic, we simply need to be still as we're in the middle of a Sunday morning series about and say, Lord, we yield to what you're doing during this time, even when we don't understand it. So let's take the last few moments and acknowledge that position of our lives and heart yes, to God Lord. as well. Lord, we do open up our lives to you and we say yes to what mm -hmm. you're doing yes. through us. Yes. May we truly be still. For some, life's just as busy as it ever was, but let us find those times to say yes to what you're doing in our lives. To others who have lost a job, we pray for help. We pray for provision. We pray for finances. To others who have been able to significantly slow down, we say yes to hearing the voice of your Amen. spirit. Yes. We say we yes to your nudges in our life. Yes. May we come out of this time more like Jesus, sensing and seeing how you shaped us than the previous few months in our lives, Lord. May Amen. we look back and see noted growth That's in our right, life. Lord. We yield to you. We say yes to yes. what you're doing, even when we don't understand it all. Mm -hmm. We ask for your divine will to be done in us, and through us. Finally, we thank you for communication opportunities like this tonight, where we can have questions and talk, but ultimately pray and look to you, the center, the foundation of our faith. Continue to shape, continue to mold, continue to use us. We yes. give you all the praise, all the glory for May 9th outreach and for everything yes. you're doing before, during, and after that, God. It's yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen to that. Oh, that's some fantastic praying. I love the P-R-A-Y, by the way. And yes. To end well, we, with saying yes to God, we just yield to your spirit. We say absolutely. yes to your leadership in our lives. is absolutely. awesome. So thank you, Steve. What a delight to have you. Oh, joy this to be here. great to have you. Thank you for being a, such an amazing part of this church family, you and your family. And thank you for helping tonight and answering these questions and for all the leadership you're helping to give for our outreach in a week and a half. So good to be with all of you. Thank you. If you have needs, if you have prayer needs, uh, you're always welcome to email at, to info at centralassembly.org. You know, if there's other ways in which we can meet needs, please be in touch with us uh, directly with one of the pastors or through info at centralassembly.org. And we'll, we'll do what we can to, to pray for you, to partner with you, to stand with you. We love and appreciate all of you. Wish we could be together, but physically, but at least we're together spiritually. And uh, thank you for joining for this Facebook Live event. We'll see you next Wednesday night at 6.30. And uh, we will uh, look forward to all that God has for us. God bless you as we continue this week.